This is April 11th, 1990. This reading is code number V632. It is the next in the Voyager sequence, Voyager project number six, dealing with the general topic of colors and their influences. In this reading, I will submit a number of questions generally based upon the same theme or topic, and that is colors. These are all questions received from the Voyagers. In some cases, I have consolidated questions that were very similar from a number of different Voyagers And so you will find that if you have submitted a number of questions and that they are similar to others, uh, you'll probably hear your name mentioned, even though you may not actually recognize the phrasing of your question. Hopefully I have maintained the integrity of your intent. Question number one, in the movement through the layers of light, like the layers of atmosphere around the earth, Peter encounters different colors that are probably related to his thoughts during this lifetime. Please tell us about this. What causes the yellow color, the green, the red? Why did Peter get a jolt with the red color? What does the red color represent? Is the indigo color like a higher consciousness? Number two, if different times in Peter's life are represented by different colors, do those colors correspond to his effective experience of those times? Example given, all sad times represented by one color, happy by another, etc. If so, are those colors the same for all persons experiencing the same effect? If so, what is the correspondence between colors and the emotional experience? Next, does everyone experience the same colors as Peter saw or different ones when they depart the earth plane? Do the colors represent different realms of habitation? In other words, different realms where souls exist collectively, or are they only associated with emotions? Is the movement through the colors related to one's mental, physical, emotional, and or spiritual state at the time of passing over? When leaving the body, does every entity go through the indigo-colored veil of darkness, even the two-day turnaround? Do the colors we have in our auras in other words, while we are here in the earth in physical body, have any significance on or association with the colors we will experience? Can one envision a color in meditation and move to that state of awareness immediately? If one uses certain colors for meditation, example given lavender, would this enhance one's ability to channel an entity from that plane, lavender, which is, again, corresponding to that specific color. This is assuming that different planes correspond to specific colors, as seemingly implied from the reading. Do thoughts affect the various colors of the chakras, or seven endocrine glands, or centers, and lotus petals? I'm presuming here that the reference to lotus petals is similar to the crown chakra of uh, eastern extraction. How and which color corresponds with which chakra? Is there a resultant effect on the health and consciousness of the total entity? Is there a different set of colors related to each of the different bodies? In example, etheric, astral, etc. What were the colors of the endocrine gland system of Jesus before and after crucifixion? What was the effect on his aura? 
As Peter, in the earlier readings, saw the various colors, did he also hear various sounds? Please explain what light is and where does it come from? What causes it to be of various colors? Let me add here that although I felt that that was probably a rather earthly scientific question, I've included it here with the hope that the uh, answer will be in accordance with what is intended in the question, in case that isn't meant in the way I took it. Are there, as fashion color analysts suggest, some colors more than others that suit each individual, or some colors more than others that suit certain environments? If so, why? How does one determine the best colors for themselves and their environment? Apparently, all the different realms, or the, quote, primary realms, end quote, are related to certain colors. Now, as we leave our homey realm in order to reincarnate into the earth or elsewhere, do we all come in on a particular color which is associated with our individual spiritual consciousness or soul vibration? Would we share that predominant color or vibration with all the other members of our soul grouping residing in the same realm? Would this likely be the color or colors we'd be particularly fond of while in the earth? Why do we prefer some colors and dislike others? I guess that every one of us has had this experience. We close our eyes for a second and spontaneously a specific color pops up and floods our inner vision. Why is that and what does it mean? And the last question. When we pray, do you perceive our prayers as colors? Do you become aware of the level of purity and intensity of our prayers by assessing the color vibration they emit? Is it that the predominant color vibration of a prayer predicates the level which it will reach, the type of realm from where helpfulness is given? Is there really something like a golden prayer a blue and a purple one, a silver and a white one? If so, please illustrate this colorful, quote, ascension of prayer, end quote. Those are the extent of the questions that I received on tape number V630, that had to do more predominantly with the general topic of color. While the questions that will follow may cross over and deal with color here and there, all of these I felt were fairly closely correlated, and as you look them over, I'm sure that you'll realize that some of them actually overlap and approach redundancy. But I felt that, again, it was inappropriate for me to attempt to interpret some specific subtle differences that I noted in the questions, and therefore, rather than miss some objective that the requestor was seeking, I ran the risk of being redundant. I think these are marvelous collection of questions, and I think they typify the deep reflection and, and contemplation that is being given to the topics that we are receiving during this project. And so now, Father, we preferably submit these questions to you, 
asking as we do that you would guide us to that which is of the best and most purposeful in accordance with your will and purpose and those of each individual whom has submitted questions above. Thank you, Father, and a special thanks and blessings to all those souls in other realms whom will be providing this information and an echo of this from nearly every one of the individuals who submitted questions. They extended their love, their gratitude, and their thankfulness for the beautiful material that we've received to date in this project. Once again, we thank you, Father. Amen. Yes, we have the channel then, and as well those references which apply to the topic, those individuals involved with same, their inquiring minds, and that of the intent and purpose of same now before us. As we begin with this work, Father, we call upon thee as ever to be our guide, the mentor of that information, as shall be humbly offered to those seeking. And thereof do we pray, Father, for thee, that it shall be the blessing of thy joy and light, that shall surround each soul in all realms presently in some need, and about whom there are none reflecting thy joyous light. It is to our joy and humbleness that we accept this offering of service in thy name. Thank you, Father. Amen. We reciprocate the gratitude for this opportunity to share with those of you in the earth whom shall perceive this information, this opportunity for mutual growth, understanding and service in the purpose and intent of our Father's Spirit. Understand that all functions that occur in terms of events of consciousness are not necessarily sequential, nor mandated to conform to that which is called absolute order in the sense of the scientific interpretation of the earth. Paradoxically, all things are in order, and harmoniously so. It then remains the task of the seeker, the perceiver, to determine how that harmony exists, and by finding such, using each harmonic as an equally spaced or distant, equidistant step towards the ascension onto the reclamation of their spiritual consciousness, fully and irrevocably. The movement of Peter in the earlier commentary through those spheres of illumination, as could be described kathis or kathi representations, are in essence ordered. They form as such rather a standard, perhaps in the manner that they reflect the accepted level of consciousness of the realm adjacent to which they exist. In many respects they typify that which is the emotional counterpart in the earth, and thereof they are representative of certain levels of emotion in accordance with that level of 
Vangelo activity, chakritic activity, as might be also correlated or associated with same. The specific colors do not necessarily conform in the absolute sense to certain types of emotion for each individual. This perhaps obviously having to do with a number of other factors, inclusive the certain group uh, thought forms and certain race thought forms, as well as individual societies, subgroupings of same and varying dialectical, or as could be called certain uh, provisions or provinces mandated within certain social strata or strata, if the latter is more correct. Thereof then do we find that as Peter progressed through these kadhis, his assessment, reaction and individual interaction with each of these was somewhat aligned with his just previous experience, that is, his just previous lifetime in the earth. More subtly, but yet ever present, these were further conditioned by the collective assembly of all earlier experiences and by, as well, the potential of all future experiences. We are cognizant that the latter might give you a bit of difficulty intellectually, so don't concern about it just now, just here, see? Each colour then had to do with activity that was primarily influential upon the emotional body, first in the earth plane, next in association with the emotional and by the responsive stimuli obtained through the physical body in terms of the standardised as accepted in the earth five senses. Then next all of this information was intellectualized or actualized through the experience of that lifetime, augmented catalytically by the sum and substance of his consciousness, which would be called his id or personality of that experience. These then basically stimulated by collective experiences existing in the subconscious while yet not superficially influential, nonetheless underlying streams of influencing energy. Above all of this then in the supraconsciousness we find in existence as given just above the collective assemblage of the intent, the purpose of this incarnation, the general soul pattern or past experiences, and the plan, pattern or ideal which is generally the imprint of individuality of this soul. See? The other Colors as experienced would be associated with the lower chakras or glandular centers. Then as these progressed, correspondingly they had to do with the ever heightening stepwise progression up these centers or glandular positions until corresponding the, the entity reached the pinnacle which in the uh, description as we defined it to you of his journey, in this instance resulted in his sleep of spirit. A differentiation needs to be made here for the purposes of reference in the earth. Categorically in the earth you recognize two types of color, one of which is called reflective or has to do with pigmentation and deals with certain absorption levels of some materials or 
particles in suspension called cuddy or pigment, which actually enhance the reflection of some rays, rays being vibrational frequency wavelengths, and deter or angularly dispel or absorb others. The properties are just given in this example then collectively denote the different categories of pigment so that, for example, an artist might select certain carrier medii as oil or water or the like which is occluded or saturated with certain types of pigment known to produce a type of reflected light. So reflected light with that definition as we find it given here about the earth is the first. Next we would move away from the earth towards what is called source light or living light. colloquially given. This light then has to do more so with not the uh, reflection of an object as such, but rather projection of light rays to uh, varying media which are in and of themselves acting somewhat as filters or diffusers. In the case of the former, the filter does in essence the same or similar as the reflected light dealing with the pigment and the diffuser tends to split these and yet not absorb them but to define them into a pattern of times uh, perceived and described as a rainbow, such as might be perceived by moisture or dust particles in the atmosphere, or by the bending or reflecting through a prism or a crystal. See? Therefore we find that all of these colors then, as they are referenced in the earth, tend to become symbols in terms of the ethnic and in terms of the specific mores or the condition often by, in your current time, advertisement or by culture, by varying uh, traditions, dogmas, even religious philosophy so that red can depict in the religious sense one thing and in the sense of aggression another, both representing blood, one representing the blood of Christ, the other simply representing blood on a battlefield, the connotation being quite diverse and yet the actualization of the data being identical in the sense of the source and description. These are matters which need to be dealt with in the earth and not here. We are merely giving them for reference. See? And so then to turn to the more specifics of the questions, Peter had the reaction based upon his own influence as a Christian and based upon his own society, in his earlier incarnation, at early age, he had reactions which were very traumatic and dealt with blood, and thus the heavy blood-like color which was alive and pulsating had an initial fragmentary recall reaction upon him. As this was tempered, it moderated. But in essence, the colors represented memories, influences, emotions, as were fragmentally a part of 
Peter's yet somewhat physical recall. See? This is not to imply that he'll lose that totally, but he will temper and has the emotional reaction to that. That's a part of the spiritual progression. See? The indigo color is, in a sense, like a higher consciousness. In this instance, it is the level of interbetween or the level of the highest uh, attainment of consciousness within the sphere which is defined as Earth. In other words, each level or realm of consciousness has an outer perimeter and an inner core or heart perimeter, which if one were to move within same, they would find another outer perimeter and an array of inner concentric spheres and another core or heart or inner perimeter of the level which is on the other side of the earth. Have you thought about that? Given with a note of loving humor. See? The colors do correspond to his effective experience and as such generalize themselves into categories. However, take a given experience, for example, his fifth birthday. He'll remember some influences of that day from the sounds. The soul records the sound as well as the kavi, and as such the sound will give off an emanation, which is the equivalent in kavi, and vice versa. The colors remembered will give off an emanation at the other end of the vibrational frequency which the soul perceives in its sensory perceptive mechanisms as sound. See, we're not just three-dimensional in this perspective now, mind thee, so that limitation doesn't apply. What is colored isn't simply colored. What is sound isn't simply sound. The interrelationship between these two expressions of vibration are visible, detectable, audible, perceptible, tactily, emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually. See? In the general sense, they are similar for all persons detecting same. In that sense, the corresponding or correlation between color and emotional experience has to do with direct parallels to the conditioning factors of society, theological belief, interracial doctrines as might have to do with race karma, collective cell group intent purposes and karma, and such as these, but more generally, yes, they relate to uh, the influences of emotion and can be patterned most generally after one of your gradient charts of vibrational frequency moving from infrared to ultraviolet to x-ray and etc. The spectrum generally aligns itself quite comfortably with the denser, more heavy, slower vibrational frequencies of mottled browns or of mottled blacks and then upwards correspondingly through the chakras. A divergence occurs here when we reach the crown chakra. Some societies will interpret this as the golden, others as the white or silver, and yet others, if they have specific sight, will perceive this as having touched the hem of God's robe, which in their interpretation must be logically black, or black is the presence of all, or vibration, from source light, not reflected light, see? We hope that helps. We understand your intent. Association with colors as Peter saw them, the colors represent different realms, and to an extent these are realms of habitation, 
but rather they are not in the true interpretation of the term habitation, but rather the title gravitational levels, in other words, implying that this is the level to which they have gravitated by choice, by habit, by desire, then that is where they exist. You can traverse these realms in a sense for your perspective, this would be lateral. However, the range in terms of height and breadth of such a realm would be interpreted as infinite from the finite perspective. From the spiritual, it would seem as a simple band of color, vibration, sound, etc. A paradox, see? Within that realm, entities will interact largely because of choice, and those whom associate with this color will generally have similar attitudes, emotions, needs, doubts, fears, guilts, desires, etc. Don't presume that those from the Bowery are the only ones there. There's quite a number of preachers there, Two. See? In other words, it's not the nature of the desire that generally confines an entity to a certain realm, but the desire itself and the way the desire is manifest. If it's obsessive, you'll find it generally in the thicker yellows. If it's possessive and... Uh, has to do with carnal desires, you'll find it in the mottled browns near the basal chakric centers. If it has to do with certain attitudes of abuse, of domination, you'll find it in some of the severe colors, as are reds. Even those who have strong spiritual connotations, and yet they are about such because of carnal desire or because of a need for self-gratification, you'll find the presence of blue in the yellow band. And so it could be interpreted that those certain colors would seem to be generally expected to be more purely that base color other colors can be present as well. See? As you broach the area of intersect between two colors, a curious event occurs. You generally approach or broach an intersect of many colors, as you will recall from Peter's experience. This occurs when entities come to the point of realizing the need for balance or moderation, then as these colors come together, if they temper or balance and become subtle, soft and yielding, and can be penetrable by the sense or by the will, and entities of equal or higher vibration are able to move through these, they provide a portal, a sort of shortcut, to the interbetween or the next veil of darkness. See? In other words, an entity can move from the yellow realm directly to the veil of darkness in the event that entity only had several things which held him or her in that realm and by gravitating to the understanding that the tempering or moderating moderating of such was their own choice or will, they release themselves from this spectrum of consciousness completely. See? Yes, so movement through the colors is related to one's mental and physical, emotional, spiritual state, not necessarily or just at the time of passing from the earth but rather the sum or summarial sense. However, influences which are dramatically present at the moment of departure from the earth do have 
a preponderant effect upon the soul in these realms. Such instances are tended to by experienced workers from this realm, where such workers move immediately to assist that entity in conjunction with that entity's guide or guides. See? When leaving the body physical, every entity goes through the indigo-colored veil of darkness. All entities. There are no exceptions. Some will pass through on the light of their own spiritual consciousness, or silver cord as it's called. In such instances, when the cord is unbroken, those entities can return. Those are NDE, or near-death experiences, and oft times OBE, or out-of-body experiences, also fall in those categories. See? Auric colors do not necessarily have to do with the association with the colors you will experience. However, conversely, a predominance of a certain color indicates, by way of its measure in the aura, certain emotions and attitudes. True? Then those are like building, in essence, the next step, which is departure from the earth. If the preponderance is such as we've given above, then those will be the colors that are dealt with first, if they are binding or limiting to the soul's movement. Paradox. Conversely, certain colors are predominant in entities' auras from the instant they are, in acceptance of that physical vehicle, to the end time that that vehicle is useful to that entity in the earth. There are many different factors involved with this, and an entire realm of discussion is possible on this singular topic. Generally, you have those souls whom can enter the earth and have no karmic purpose, but rather a mission. In other words, this isn't individual karma, this is group work, or as an emissary of those of light, or of God. The Master enters the earth on such a ray, such a light, maintains it and departs upon it. See? Certain guides, certain soul group workers, will choose to enter with a certain power that will be evidenced in their aura. See? Understand why this is a broad and expansive topic. Do you? Good. Envisioning a color in meditation enables an entity to move to that state of awareness immediately, providing the entity has that capability. In other words, just envisioning a color isn't a magical wand that enables you to break free of all constraints you have builded, given with a note of loving humor. Conversely, if you select a vibration of personal power to you, in other words, Generally, let's call it your favorite color. That color has personal power for you. If you focus upon it, it will provide you with a state of ease. That state of ease makes the way more possible, and you accelerate your movement. Immediate, this depends upon the individual. See? Accelerated, yes. Continual concentration upon certain vibrations enhances one's movement. Therefore, if consistency of use of certain colors is the watchword, then that certain color becomes a catalyst or a triggering mechanism to accelerate movement. Try that one. You'll find it productive. See? 
movement to a certain Kali in terms of focusing upon that as a catalyst to make contact with an entity at that level or realm should be used advisedly. Be certain that the color that you want to choose is the type of expression or entity that you want to channel. The highest and best is that of the pure light. The pure light as it is expressed in your realm is pure white. The level of consciousness which is demarcative between your realm and the next realm does not appear to you in the earth as pure white because you are still in the earth. Therefore, it is called the veil of darkness for your perception, for your understanding. It's not that complex. We'll try again. It's our area and we'll make a greater effort here. But simply understand this. Many things of consciousness are relative to the perspective and the acceptance level of the individual whom is the perceiver. If that entity is in physical form, generally they are limited to physical sensory tools. If they have educated themselves in terms of becoming free, they may have gained the adequate use of other tools. Perspective and Tools We'll attempt to exemplify this with some uh, brief analogies extracted from your realm. As a child you perceive construction to be the building with paste and paper. You may also consider it to be the filling of a container with sand and the inversion of same in a sandbox. Building with various types of container gives you various types of structures. As you gain in earth year duration or age, you begin to perceive construction differently. You look to that which is more complex, more integrated, and that which is produced by those who are skilled in terms of artisanry of their varying trades. As the cycle continues, you perceive mechanical devices, electronic devices, aeroplanes, and such as these, and you may desire or become a part of the activities associated with same. Those are the devices of construction, of development, of uh, perception. As you were a child, simplicity existed. If you did not like that which you builded, you simply ran your hands over it and started over again. As you gathered age, you gathered knowledge, experience, influence, patterns. You were subjected to certain expectations. The evaluations of emotions on the part of those around you, in other words, if your peers perceived certain things to be desirable, you were influenced by that. As you became subjected to advertisement, whether through printed form, broadcast, or televised, or thought patterns, and yes, these are used, the matter is the same. You began to subtly expect for yourself that which was uh, pronounced to you or presented to you. The collage of all of this influence then brings you to the point where your attitude of expectation then is tempered by the collection of expectations imposed upon you by existence in the earth. We hope we've made ourselves clear to this point. Then the sensory perception that you have, as you see, is tempered by all of that. Associated with this during the process of influence and growth are colors. Certain colors are denoted to be good, other colors are denoted to be bad. Evil is thought of as black, and good or righteousness as thought of as white. 
that which is golden is to be revered, and that which is brown or black or mottled is considered to be rubble. That which is pink and fragrant is desirous, that which is brilliant, red and repugnant is not. Emotion is a subject which is dealt with by brilliance. Expectation is heightened by the presence of brilliant colors. Which color is most prevalent in advertisement to attempt to get your attention? Yes, you've said red. What do you color red in the earth? The heart, the lips upon a female entity, even with a note of loving humor. Those Egyptians really started something with that, didn't they? And then from here we find that green is lovely, it's a meadow, it's a field, it's also in the North American money, Yellow is very beautiful, as the rays of this color dance upon the surface of a body of water. Or there is the vile yellow of bigotry, of hatred, of dispassionate attitudes of violence one against another. And so it is, do you see? What senses you have have been influenced. The perception of your consciousness as is introduced to new experience must thereby also be influenced. And if your thoughts and your attitudes and your emotions are all that you have when you leave the earth in the sense of being finite or infinite, isn't it logical that you should attempt to balance those colors, those vibrations, and to restore to good health your sensory perception? Isn't it further logical that a worker would wish to regain the full and complete individualization of their tools? Thoughts are color. Thoughts are music. You are moving into a realm where thought is very important. It is what the Master, as the man called Jesus, expressed, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he in this realm of my Father. In other words, what you are within is what you are here in the total, in the sum and substance. What you hold in your heart denotes what's upon your spiritual cloak. Becoming clear, that would be our prayer. And so as you would turn again back to the questions as given above, is there a different set of colors related to each of the different bodies? Well, actually, yes, there is. The astral body won't respond to the colors in the same way as the physical body, because the astral body isn't carrying all the baggage the physical body is. Similarly, the etheric body is even less bound by habit, mores, expectation, ideological doctrine, and such. But the true body, the spirit body, is to become unencumbered. The objective upon departing from the earth is to return to the spiritual body, in order to do this, one must pass through, back along the conduit or passageway, the river of light. Do you recall that? 
the channel of blessings, the silver cord. If this can be completely removed from within the sphere and concentric realms of influence around that sphere, the entity is freed to progress. Think about it. If you can move through each of those realms, symbolized by varying colors and interactions between the colors, you will be free. What exactly does it mean to be free? Well, with a note of loving humor, when we return to Peter, you'll find out. Until then, let's proceed with your questions. Well, as Peter moved before the massive array of influences, of potentials, each color was as an offering in essence saying to him or any vestiges of his human, emotional, physical tendencies, See me, here I am, a realm of existence, wonderful, I'll provide your every wish. Look about you, there are entities here, they think as you do, join them, come with us. That's the kind of influence that's present in the sea of faces. It's that sort of thing that is dealt with. See? Each of the colors do represent not only different bodies in a sense, but an entire spectrum of color is representative of that body dependent upon the individual's relationship to the attitudes and emotions as are aligned with those colors physically, mentally and emotionally all important and to a degree spiritually. The colors of the glandular centers the colors of the chakritic centers of the man whom was called Jesus were consistent from the moment of entry until the moment of departure. To the perceiver whom had eyes to see, which is an important point, isn't it? His aura was consistent until the instant he stated it is done. At which point the shift was from the physical to the spiritual body. Because of the prophecy and his intended purpose, the physical, astral, etheric and spiritual bodies did not completely disconnect in the manner that you understand the process of death or dying or departure in the earth. Therefore, after this uh, conclusive point, the aura remained consistent, but again to those whom could perceive, there was a difference because the life force was not empowering the body in the physical sense. The spiritual force was totally in control. Therefore the color was not as such vibrant in the sense of depth and breadth, but uh, translucent, glowing. To try to become specific for you, one of the observers states that he was preceding the moment of his final comments aglow in a silvery orb. 
at a moment after his last words, the entirety of existence seemed to take upon a tremendous orb of velvety darkness, as though the sky no longer was separate from the earth, and the body and those of the faithful took upon themselves glows which illuminated that which was about, and that was perceptibly the only light. Moments thereafter, the shift in coloration became golden round and about Jesus, and remained such until the last perceptible moment of this observe. See? In the earth, there are those whom would tell you, this or that color suits you, and they will be correct to an extent that their evaluatory methods can tell which colors seem to blend with what they'll call an elusive uh, harmonic or an elusive uh, reflective coordinates. While we are told here that they have definable criteria from which this occurs and reflectometer type um, activities which prove it, only understand this. If one's aura possesses a rather heavy uh, scarlet cuddy, Certainly some colors in the spectrum will balance with that and blend well. But supposing that that heavy scarlet color is a part of the karma you're carrying in the earth. If you complement it, aren't you supporting it? Given with a note of loving humor. Let thy colors be chosen from within self and in meditation, and here's the procedure, it's very simple. Meditate, seated erect, in an eastern style, before a mirror, large enough so that you can see the entirety of your body, seated in the form as you would see Buddha seated. The cross legs and the up uh, opened upwards palms resting in the lap as it's called the room should be dimly if at all lit let it be lit by candlelight either between you and the mirror or off to the sides one or two on each side pray meditate and with your eyes closed, seat yourself erect in front of the mirror until you feel the urge to look, then do so. You'll perceive beautiful colors. One or more will be predominant. Those you see are your colors. That simple. See? Now, looking out the other side, using the earthly senses and other intuitive guidances, you are intuitively attracted to those colors which are best for you in terms of arriving at a state of balance and ease in the earth. While these may not be your best colors in terms of an authentic, genuine evaluation of what's right for you on the part of someone else, given with a note of loving humor and compassionate understanding, they're still the colors you should choose. If you like them, they're good for you, aren't they? If someone tells you that color looks awful on you, agree and tell them that you simply like it anyway. See? The color which is good for you is a color which you choose. That color may differ 
day to day, week to week, month to month. Last year's favorite Kathy may be the one on the bottom of the list this year. You've grown. Your needs have changed. Your spirit has awakened here or there. And now you are looking to the next level of expression. See? Next paradox. Entities whom have difficulty in the emotional sense tend to rigidly conform to the Kali spectrum in the earth. Line this up with the chakras and with emotions that correspond to those chakras and you have a ready-made treatment method. Certain criminal mentalities also respond to this uh, without fail. Give uh, a brutalizer who's in the dungeons of solitary confinement a pastel feminine pink surrounding and you'll change him in a fortnight. Those whom don't believe need to try. See? Color is powerful. You can use it to heal, you can use it to influence, you can use it to guide or to remind. Color is a tool. Color creates resonance within you, the perceiver. Music is a tool. It influences you, it guides you, it directs you, it can remind you, it can stimulate you. It creates color within you. Music creates color and color creates music. Combine the two and you have a dynamic healing environment. What's the next sense? Well, perhaps the tactile sense. Give an entity several objects to touch. Plug their ears, cover their eyes, block their nose, and such, and let them feel different fabrics. You can wire them up to your electronic devices and you detect a difference. That difference will correspond to the dielectric rhythm of the electromagnetic nature of the body. Galvanically, they are capable of measuring. Uh, they are capable of being measured in terms of all of your monitoring devices. Whether you wish to measure brain waves or respiratory changes or uh, the uh, cellular salt uh, reaction, if you've developed that good enough as yet, all of these things will manifest themselves and be capable of being defined. Put a bit of salt on that same entity's tongue and watch the meters measure. Irrigate the tongue and the oral cavity. Allow two, three minutes to pass to allow the neuron endings to uh, neutralize themselves and sprinkle a few grains of sugar on the tongue or better yet, a bit of honey. Watch the meters. Experiment similarly with other uh, uh, spectrum extremes, pepper, onion, you know, such as these, the more uh, exotic pleasures of the earth, uh, given with loving understanding. So you know about sight, about hearing, about touch, and about taste. The remaining sense has to do with the olfactory and paradoxically this 
perhaps is one of the more dynamic senses for you in the earth, and yet has not as yet been recognized as such. If you stimulate the sense of smell, it automatically activates all of the other sensations. If you stimulate the sensory perception tactically, it doesn't do these. at least not for a delayed period of time. The delay reactive factor is prolonged. The same is true with hearing. The same is true with sight. And somewhat similarly, but less so, with taste. Taste and smell are closely correlated, of course. Many of you know these. Being uh, medically oriented and scientifically oriented, but what you may not have possibly realized is that the connective link then here tends to activate the next level of sensory perception. In other words, we are dealing with the pineal or pineal and pituitary glands here and a very uh, small center ganglia or nerve uh, collection which tends to act as a fulcrum or springboard for the next level of sense. It is in this interactive state of um, your physiological structure that stems the basis for what is called the third eye, which isn't an eye at all, but rather the third level of expression of man. Body, mind, spirit. See? In the spiritual, then, at the level of the third eye, the entire spectrum of Kali takes on new dimension. It no longer exists in the sense of the finite expression, nor can it be corralled in the sense of the earth nomenclature for a singular purpose. It begins to take on the characteristics of its true nature, which is as to say, it becomes a living expression of those whom perpetuate it. For some of you, little doors are opening into a new realm of understanding with these last few words of commentary. And we applaud you loving thee and warm thee and welcome you here with your knowledge. It is our prayer that it becomes for you the gift of wisdom. As you pass through the portal, which is symbolically and in a sense literally symbolized by the third eye and the conscious perception of what this is, You begin to play, as it were, the game of consciousness with an entirely new set of tools. Do you remember the analogy of the child in the sandbox? Their reality was simplistic by design and in terms of their potential control over it. And so ye must be likened on to these little children before ye might enter into the kingdom of my father. See the meaning? The truth is before you. And now it awakens. Through the portals of consciousness then becomes or comes the understanding that all of existence, as you are about to move into it, is the end result of someone's thinking. The first colors are not actually colors after all. 
but thought forms. If the thought forms correspondingly relate to activities, attitudes and or emotions from the earth, which have to do with lower glandular associated activities, lust, excessive sexual desires, uh, and all manner, as you can imagine, perhaps better than we, then these living thought forms combine in this strata to become the realm of the murky, rather collage-like assemblage of those heavier, thicker, denser, lower, chocritic origin thoughts. The desire for expression of love in a union of matrimony and the wish to bear children is not a brown thought form. It is one of love, of light, has a silver hue, dances and sparkles with golden and pastel pink colors. Oh yes, could be a blue one here or there. That's the symbol for the boy, isn't it? And yet all of these have to do with the same centre. How can it be then that in these realms of thought a sexual activity can be such a beautiful collage of music, colour and experience on the one hand and on the other be almost thick and syrupy like mud upon your boots in the earth speaking from the spiritual perspective, colloquially, not literally. See, there's considerable humour here over that comment. Kali Thought Desire What's important to you in the earth? will continue to be important to you here. If a colour is associated with that in the earth, it tends to symbolically be the depiction of that desire here. Universally? No, not necessarily, not generally. See? The best colors for you and for your environment are the ones that make you joyful. And if what's joyful also seems to be burdensome, then find out why. And look for the influence of other thoughts. Look for attitudes of excess. Remember, as above, where the colors come together and join in their pastels. Oft times many, if not all, colors will be found there in a brief or narrow strata. This is a path of accelerated growth. Moderation is a state of balance. The balanced aura is the, ba is the aura which has literally the indicator of an entity whom has made significant spiritual progress. A balanced aura is capable of projecting the primary thought form as is the best and highest for the situation in which that entity exists. And thus, that entity, as might be appropriately and lovingly called an adept, would project what's needed by an entity at hand to their physical body because that is how they perceive them and that is their extension of love. They are beginning to use the tools of their spiritual consciousness of which one is love. See? Have you ever in the earth thought of love as a tool? 
Well, if you haven't, with a note of loving humor, advertising agencies have. We're not speaking of that, of course. We are speaking here of the viability and power which is present in you if you voluntarily choose to deal with an individual or a situation in an attitude of unreserved, unrestricted love. Not the abandonment of your ideal, your purpose, your goal. Not subjecting yourself to the needs or expectations or even the desires of another, but to express to them through the mechanism of your unlimited potential for love. Not sexually, not even physically. Actually, though a bit of a gentle touch here and there doesn't hurt. See? No, nor does a well-intended hug. But let's not split uh, straws, or uh, hairs here, that's the term. The question is an attitude of spiritual intent. If your intention is from the level of your spiritual form, then what's your tool? Well, one of your tools is the power of love. The child in the sandbox can create with a container. You can create with love. See? If you leave your homey realm here and decide to incarnate in the earth, you will no doubt choose a primary color upon which to enter. The common vernacular for this is called the ray, R-A-Y, upon which the soul has entered. Those whom can see or whom have gained through their dedicated efforts access to the Akasha or the Universal Records can define that or interpret it for you. But being mindful that just as in all given above, the primary ray or color upon which you have entered does not necessarily mean that you won't choose or be perceived as having predominant other colors. The primary ray is associated with the overview or theme or ultimate goal of this or a series of incarnations that you as the soul have chosen to embark upon. Generally, though, the ray does have to do primarily with that lifetime in the more specific sense, because most souls are dealing in the singular consciousness with one lifetime at a time. See? There aren't that many whom can juggle more than one lifetime at a point of consciousness, not that many dealing with simultaneous existences, contrary to what might be the impression you have. Multiple awareness levels, yes, but that's different. You having two, three, four bodies walking around at the same time We don't see many of those here. See? A soul has the power to choose and to create in accordance with its will. If that is your will, you are capable of it, providing you don't violate universal law and the prime law or thought form for that realm. Then it's within your possibility. But as you choose a ray, it generally defines your intent and purpose, your alignment with specific works for that lifetime in that 
primary incarnation. Subgroupings do not always all choose the same ray or kali, as should seem obvious to you at this point. Subgroupings will choose intentionally a multiplicity of rays, and the higher the consciousness, the less likely is the ray to be definable in earthly terms. It will be seen as a shaft of light, or silvery, or uh, indigo, or violet, something in that nature. This would likely be your color of preference, or a color which makes you feel good, or right. See? But not, not necessarily a color in the sense of, uh, let's say, that's what you need to work upon. In other words, this is not necessarily a color which depicts uh, a karmic need, though it can. It may be a spiritual blessing. We regret if this sounds complex. It's not. It's just that there is considerable latitude and individuality available to you all. Now then, when you close your eyes and a certain color pops before your eyes, if it's not the afterglow of an incandescent light, then it has to do with a guidance for you and possibly for uh, that which you are encouraged to seek out. Follow that kadi and become a part of it. It's a good experience. Pray, as you might assume from what we've given above, is a part of the thought form of the person praying. Wouldn't they project in Kadi? We are grateful to those who have come forward here to provide this information. We know that their uh, intent has been pure and we pray that the material is found in your hearts and minds to be joyful and of small illumination to your footsteps in your paths in the earth. May the light of our Father's wisdom be that which ever guides you in all realms. Pray well then for the present, dear friends.